Let us bow. Our God and Father in heaven, we humbly approach your throne of mercy and Father, dear grace, thank you all for all things, dear God. Thank you for all occasions. Thank you for the time that we are spending here uh, to be with one another, to listen to uh, a series of sp speakers who are uh, giving you, uh, giving us a word from the from the Lord. And for fa for that, Father, we're so thankful. We're thankful for the efforts that have uh, happened today, Father. We are thankful for those that are here to take part. And Father God, we also are thankful for those who could not make it but wanted to. We just want to want 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 you to know that we love you, and that we just enjoy uh, hearing the word, being edified building each of ourselves up in fellowship. And so, Father, we're thankful for this occasion. We're thankful for all that you do. And Father God, during the course, during the course of these uh, speakers and the, today and tomorrow, we ask that you continue to strengthen them and, and, and as they have prepared to present a good lesson to us, Father God. And Father God, we ask that you forgive us of our shortcomings. There are times when we fall short. But we're so thankful that you give us spiritual blessings that we know what to do. And for God, Father God, we just continue to thank you for this, 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 this lectureship, that it may continue to grow. We thank you for the brothers and sisters of uh, this congregation, the Emerald Road congregation, and the effort that has gone on here. And we just continue to actually to watch over us this day and days to come. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the church. And we thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Was his name we pray and give thanks. Amen. I know that my Redeemer lives. Let us sing. I know that my Redeemer lives and never prays for me. And I know eternal life he gives from sin and sorrow free. And I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know, I know eternal life he gives. I know. When from this earth life free, and I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know, I know the eternal life He gives. I know.
Brother Rico L. Brown, preacher for the Virginia Avenue Congregation in Chester, West Virginia. Brother Brown has preached for congregations in Florida as well as in West Virginia. He is a graduate of the Florida School of Preaching in Lakeland, Florida. He also has prepared himself by earning uh, two bachelor's degrees and a master's degree uh, from, I think both from UCF, University of Central Florida. Okay. Uh, Brother uh, uh, Rico, after having done that, decided that he wanted to go on and he went to uh, further himself and he went to Florida School of Preaching. And uh, he, as he says, and I quote, where he attributed to his greatest educational achievements thus far. His former work experience includes serving as an aide to a retired Orange County commissioner and as a congressional aide to a member of the United States House of Representatives. He has worked as a high school social studies teacher and in public relations. I thought this was very telling about our dear brother. He said, uh, Brother Rico believes we all should serve and live our lives so that everyone may see Christ in us. In all facets of our lives, our purpose as Christians to let our light shine. And I uh, really agree with that. He's married to the former Letitia Parker of Orlando. They have two children, Anthony and Layla. Uh, Sister Parker is going to be our ladies speaker, and uh, both of them are natives of Florida, and so we're just glad to have them. We joke a lot about some things in dealing with uh, Florida uh, and schools, but uh, we love him and love him as a fellow servant in Christ. He has a wonderful, a great topic, and I know he's going to do a great job. Uh, Christ in you, the hope of glory, Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. Uh, let's uh, get our Bibles and get our, open up our minds as Brother Rico Brown comes to us and preaches the word. Let me first of all start out by saying thank you. I thought it was interesting. You had three bald head men up here before anybody realized it was hot. So I guess they didn't realize it when he was up here earlier. Uh, uh, we don't have any hair on our heads, but if we were hot, then I guess it was hot. Uh, up here. Romans, the chapters 1 and the verses of 16 and 17, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Uh, let me first of all say thank you to Brother Melson and the congregation here for uh, hosting uh, these lectures and the opportunity uh, to speak and to declare God's holy and his divine word. I never take for granted uh, the opportunity to speak or be called upon uh, recognizing that there are many more capable men of God. Uh, I am, uh, if you will, this afternoon going to lecture, to preach and teach all in one. Uh, uh, and, I, and the reason I want to emphasize that, I had prepared to just lecture. Uh, Br Brother Melson's daughter uh, uh, called me a couple weeks ago and informed me that she was going to prepare a sweet potato pie uh, for me if I preached. So you all get the benefit of a lecture and some preaching. Uh, they all go together. So yes, the easiest way to a preacher's stomach is still via the sweets, uh, uh, if you will. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, let us consider verse 27. To whom God, using the King James Version, to whom God would make known what is the riches of, of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Uh, if you will, before we analyze this particular verse, uh, uh, let us consider the surrounding verses for proper context. Uh, it begins, if you will, uh, in verse number 24. Kevin led us up to verse 24 by concluding with 23. We pick up, if you will, in verse 24, where Paul sets forth the preeminence uh, of Christ in person uh, as well as uh, in performance. Uh, and, and so that is Paul. Paul said what he preached. First of all, Paul gave us the basis of his authority to preach God. 
Yeah. Secondly, he told us the manner in which he was to preach the full word of God. Thirdly, he gave us the subject of his preaching, the mystery which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Fourthly, we have the design of Paul's preaching to present every man perfect, Fifthly, we see the strength of Paul's preaching. Uh, it worketh in him mightily. Uh, and finally, we see the audience of Paul's preaching. Uh, every man. Uh, I believe that includes us uh, who are here on today. So if you will, let us analyze this verse and make proper application for our lives today. Uh, to whom God would make known. Now, know this, God does what he wants, like he wants, whenever he decides to do it. He is not subject unto us, but we, contrary to popular belief, are subject to him and will do as he desires. We can do it willingly to our benefit, or in Jonah's case, unwillingly, but either way, God still gets the benefit. Consider, consider if you will, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and the verse is 14. Now thanks be unto God, uh, which always uh, causes us to triumph, where? In Christ, uh, and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us, where? In every place. The manifestation of the gospel uh, uh, is chosen uh, of God according to his own grace, uh, not of or by man in any way or fashion, uh, but solely uh, through the pure sovereign goodwill uh, and pleasure of our God. Consider Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1 and the verses 9. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will uh, according to his good pleasure which he hath purposed uh, in himself. Run over to Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11 and the verses are 25 and verse uh, number 26. Uh, Bible declares at that time Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid thee these things uh, from the wise and prudent and has revealed them where unto babes uh, even so father for it seemed good to wear in thy sight God does what he wants to do like he wants to do it and I would encourage us to just obey it continuing on with our verse uh, to whom God would make known what is he going to make known what is the riches of uh, of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. Uh, the apostles, uh, if you will, besides calling the gospel a mystery, as before ascribes glory to it. Uh, it is a glorious mystery. There is a glory in all the mysteries uh, of the gospel. Uh, it is a glorious gospel as it is often called uh, in its author, in its subject, in its matter, in its use, uh, in its efficacy and also uh, riches of glory or glorious riches uh, containing uh, rich truths uh, an immense treasure of rich truths uh, uh, comparable if you will so that we can understand to gold, silver, uh, precious stones uh, rich blessings of justification, uh, pardon, uh, reconciliation, adoption, uh, and uh, eternal life, uh, and rich promises uh, relating both to this life uh, and uh, that life which is to come. I let folk know all the time, uh, most preachers are not filthy rich. Uh, physically, if you will, but spiritually, I want you to know I will put my ass up, uh, assets uh, up against Jeff Bezos any given day of the year. You got to understand that I got something uh, he ain't got. Uh, he uh, can send people all the way to space, uh, and I got more right here on earth. Uh, you got to understand, no matter what he has, uh, he does not have uh, what all uh, 
of us have. Uh, all we have to understand uh, when it comes down to these riches, uh, all which were open and made known, uh, not to just Jews only, uh, but among the Gentiles uh, also, uh, who before, according uh, to Ephesians 2.12, uh, we uh, were aliens. Uh, you know how we treat aliens, brothers and sisters? Uh, if you want to know how we treat aliens, uh, well, when people come across the border of the United States and the southern region, we don't do that on the northern side, we're okay with them. But when people come across the border uh, on the southern region, uh, we call them aliens uh, and we treat them differently, if you will. I'm not going to get into a political, political argument, uh, but I want you to know the way we treat them uh, is the way we used to be spiritually. So if you can imagine Imagine being rustled up and detained and held in captivity, if you will. That's the way it used to be. But thanks be to God, it's not that way anymore. The Bible helps us to understand we were not only aliens, we were enemies, exceedingly wicked, poor. We were blind and miserable. But now, how? Through the gospel, we become rich. We become glorious, wise, knowing, and happy. The mystery was not and is not something mystical and incomprehensible, but rather that which had not been previously revealed was now made known how? Through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, Ephesians 3 beginning at verse number 3, how that by revelation he made known unto me what the mystery as I wrote a four in a few words whereby when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ uh, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it now is revealed uh, unto his holy apostles uh, and prophets uh, by the spirit uh, that the Gentiles uh, should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise where in Christ how by that gospel, 1 Peter 1, verses 9 through 12, and also Romans 16, verse 25 through 26, uh, only bring out this point uh, a little bit better. Now, where you want me to be uh, with my assigned topic? Uh, the latter part uh, of uh, this verse, uh, the Bible says, uh, which is uh, Christ in you, uh, comma, means continuation of thought, uh, which is Christ in you. And what is that? The hope of glory. Brothers and sisters, know this uh, uh, is to be connected with all that went before. Christ uh, is uh, the riches of, of the gospel. Uh, notice I said is singular. It's all about Christ. Uh, nothing else in this world amounts uh, to our relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, you know there are a few things, uh, if you will, I will defend uh, with all of my heart, mind, body, and soul. I will defend my daughter. I will defend my wife. Uh, I will get fighting mad and defend uh, the gospel of Christ. Uh, you can talk about America. Amen. Have at it all day long. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. Are there crooks in D.C.? Absolutely. How many? 535. Exactly. <laughs> Don't try and tell me which one is and which one's not. All of them are crooks. Uh, I got proof to back up what I'm saying. You're going on hypotheticals. Uh, you need to understand I will defend the Lord's church. Uh, brother told me a few weeks ago, he says, you know, uh, I would feel for a Catholic uh, if they ever came into our house of worship because they would feel as if they don't belong here. No, they would feel if they don't belong there. Amen. I'm not sugarcoating the gospel. Souls are at stake. Uh, too long Christians have played, I'll go to church with you today if you go with me next week. And then we find ourselves in false worship settings uh, and wondering why you can never win them over because you playing tit for tat with them. Uh, I will not step foot in a false religious institution if I ain't up there preaching. Amen. The Baptist church made that mistake uh, right across in Liverpool. They invited me over to speak. Uh, 
preacher came to me afterwards and he said, good job, but you ain't coming back. You got to understand uh, that was your mistake for inviting me. I'm not going to change uh, the gospel of Christ. Uh, know this, my friends, Christ uh, is the riches of the gospel, the riches uh, of the divine perfections which the gospel more clearly uh, displays than the works of creation or providence. Uh, all are where in Christ. The fullness of them dwells in him uh, and this is the grace the gospel reveals that he who was rich with all of these things uh, became poor to make us rich. Uh, the rich promises of the gospel were all made to and are in Christ. Uh, the rich blessings of it uh, are all in his hands. Uh, righteousness, peace, pardon the riches both of grace and of glory. Uh, the riches of treasure and its divine truths are hid uh, in him. And he is the substance of every one of them. Christ is also the glory of the gospel. Inasmuch as he is the author, the preacher, and subject of the gospel, it is full of the glory of his person, both as the only begotten of the Father and the only mediator between God and man. It is the glass through which this is seen. Moreover, the glory of God in him is expressed. Hereby, the glory of his wisdom and power, of his truth and faithfulness, of his justice and holiness of his love his grace his mercy and every other perfection is eminently held forth where in the gospel brothers and sisters know what we have know what we have know what we must use so that man can be set free as this is great, my friends, in the salvation and redemption of, of his people by him, by Christ, uh, which the gospel brings the good news of. Uh, add to this uh, that the glory, that the glory which the saints shall have with Christ uh, and will lie in the enjoyment of him throughout all uh, eternity. I'm so glad. I'm so glad every day over there is going to be like Sunday. I'm so glad I won't have any more pain, no more worry, no more trials uh, for all of those former things the Bible convinces me of uh, will have passed away. You know, sometimes we get tired of church on Sunday. Amen. You know, there he is preaching again. How long he going to preach today? If you get tired of hearing your preacher down here, I don't know that you want to go to heaven. Amen. Uh, you, you may go ahead and enjoy your life down here and make hell your home. Amen. Uh, you may not want to go to heaven if you get tired of the truth. Uh, we're going to be gathered around the throne praising him all day long. Uh, you know how long we sit at some football games to see our team get beat and not have a problem? Amen. Don't come up in the Lord's house holding your watch up looking at the preacher. i tell you what time it is when you want to know. But don't expect uh, your attitude to reflect in what the preacher has and his gratitude uh, toward our Lord. Uh, sometimes people say, I didn't get nothing out of the sermon. Well, I don't recall seeing you in my study, so you didn't put nothing in it. Hello, somebody. you got to understand that what we deliver is for the good and edification of, of the body. Every lesson isn't going to be hellfire and brimstone, but some lessons you need to take out your notebook and understand. And that's what lectureships are all about for us to gain better knowledge of God's word and our implications in it. Yes, it was written to the church at Colossae, but I want you to know I see us in 2021 right there in God's word, brothers and sisters, know this. Know this. The mystery of our God, of our Lord's divine sonship, of his divine person being God and yet man, man, if you will, and yet God both in one person and his carnation and redemption make us a considerable part, make him a considerable part of the gospel. There is a glory for which we, the saints, are hoping for which the glories of this world are but a faint resemblance of, which is unseen at present, and which the sufferings of the present time, Bible helps us to understand the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to what is eternal, which is Christ. Has Christ has entered into and took possession of and what will greatly consist in the beholding of his glory in the everlasting communion with him through this grace. 
brothers and sisters, we, his saints, have hope of and we're waiting for it and even rejoice at times in the hope of heaven of which hope our Lord in Christ is the foundation. For not only the promise of it is with him, but the glory itself is in his hands. The gift of it is with him and through him. He has made way by his sufferings and death for the enjoyment of it and is now preparing it for us by his presence and intercession, his grace makes us meet for it. His righteousness uh, gives us a title to it in his spirit uh, is the earnest of it and the substance of it uh, will be the fruition uh, of uh, himself. Uh, therefore, because uh, our hope lives, uh, brothers and sisters, we rejoice. Uh, because our hope lives, uh, we rejoice. Our hope is comprised, if you will, of desire, an expectation. That is, uh, we desire, we must desire to go to heaven uh, and we must expect to go there. You know, sometimes you'll run into Christians and you'll say, uh, are you going to heaven? And they'll say, well, uh, I don't know. The Bible tells me you can know where you're going to go. Now, if you say you don't know what you're essentially saying to me as a preacher, I got some sin and I ain't ready to give it up yet. Amen. Uh, and what you need to do is get that out of your life. Turn with me to 1 John. 1 John 5. 1 John 5, verse 13. 1 John 5, and the verse is 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. Why? <laughs> Listen now. I didn't make it up. It's written right there. That ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this, there we are, is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, look at the assurance we have, uh, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, uh, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have uh, the petitions we desired uh, of him. Now that's called confidential prayer life. If you can't have confidence in your prayer life, you need to analyze uh, who you're praying to. I have been assured uh, of my prayers when I pray to him, through him, and with him. I can't live the way Rico wants to live Monday through Friday and Saturday sometimes and then decide to be a, a holy Christian on Sunday. And then I expect the Lord to answer all of my prayers. No, sir, no, ma'am, it don't work that way. I must commit my life to him 24-7, 365, and occasionally 66, uh, and recognize uh, that I am his, uh, and guess what? He is uh, mine. Uh, I know where my hope is. Do you? Many a times we are faced with situations in life that force us to ask why or why me or why now. We search and search for an answer to no avail and many times we desire to throw in the towel, if you will, but because of his spirit dwelling in us, we fight on. Brothers and sisters, some concerns are huge and some are so minute that we can't even describe them if we were asked about them. But through it all, we hope for a better tomorrow than we had on today. More importantly, because of whom our hope is and whether we are basking in blessings or grinding through grief, our trust remains in our hope. Our hope is Jesus Christ. Know this, if you will, our hope is alive. Turn with me to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1 in the verses of 3 down through verse number 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope. How? By the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead uh, to an inheritance uh, incorruptible and undefiled uh, and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven uh, for you. Our hope is alive because of our Father. Our hope is alive because of his son. Now, our hope is alive because of our inheritance. So, you know how sometimes kids sit around waiting on parents to die? Amen. You know, being a preacher, my daughter ain't never got to worry about that. I can't leave her nothing. Amen. I may leave a little something, but uh, uh, most preachers in here know that our inheritance is up there. 
So if you want some of whatever daddy has, you got to live right. So when you, when daddy, when you die, you go where daddy goes, and then we all get our inheritance. So we must recognize our hope is alive. It's past time for Christians to hold their head up. Amen. You need to understand we have not been defeated. We will not be defeated because victory is already ours. Uh, amen. Well, Rico, we're still fighting. Uh, yes, we're still fighting. Read Revelation. Victory is already ours. Uh, I always tell folk, uh, Revelation, in my opinion, my humble opinion, is our book. Amen. Folk of the world can't see what we see in the book of Revelation. Uh, only those who are in Christ can see uh, what Revelation is all about. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Oh, times will get rough. You need to understand we are seeing things now we never thought we'd see before. Women able to marry women. Men able to marry men. Amen. All of that stuff, it sounds so strange, but have we not heard of Sodom and Gomorrah? These things aren't new. You need to understand the Bible is just revealing itself and coming to life. And we stand back and we're so astonished. I, I can't believe that. Where you been living? You've been living under a rock somewhere? And now we got multimedia. We got internet. We got, that's the only reason you see it now. It's out there in your forefront. But there is nothing new under God's sun. No. Mankind's sin shall and are waxing worse and worse. So many times people say, well, I, I never thought I'd see this day. You must have never thought the Bible was going to come true. Amen. There is nothing going on that has not been written in God's word. Right there in 1 Peter again. Pick up at verse number 5. Bible says, who are kept high by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice. Though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Our hope has power. Amen. I want you to understand while the world is trying to grapple with what's going on, uh, we look to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, we may not know what tomorrow holds, but thanks be to God, we know who holds tomorrow. And as a result of that, we recognize our hope has power and our hope has the power of God. Uh, our hope has the power of faith. Uh, our hope uh, has power over problems. Uh, too many times we look at the size of our problems and say, how am I going to get through this? Uh, I want you to look at the size of your problem and say, do you know the size of my God? Amen. Uh, I don't care what it is. It may be a sick one in the hospital. Uh, if it's their time, it's their time. Amen. No matter what you are going through there in Chester, we've had to bury three members because of this here virus. Uh, and I put forward to you, none of us know how we're going to check out, but recognize this. Uh, just as sure as we checked out of the hotel this morning, you're going to check out of this place. Uh, amen. Now, if you're one of those who are, who are here, when he comes back, God be with you. I don't know that I can see people, you know, just disappearing all around me, talking about a rapture. Amen. Uh, uh, you know, I, I'd rather have to go ahead and, and bid my farewell right now. Uh, uh, understand, brothers and sisters, uh, our hope has power. Never give up on our hope. If God brought you to it, uh, he will always bring you through it. If you keep your eyes on the prize, look at verses 7 and 8 of 1 Peter. 1 Peter again, 7 and 8. Bible says that the trial, here we are, of your faith uh, being much more precious than a gold that perisheth, uh, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, uh, whom, having not seen, ye love, uh, and whom, uh, though now you see him not, yet believing, uh, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of of glory our hope is sure brothers and sisters why because we're tough you know there used to be a slogan built for tough you ever seen those commercials for Ford cars when folk walk up to you and they say well how do you do that I'm built Christ tough amen no matter what comes my way I am built Christ tough because we have been tried Understand there is nothing new under the sun. Every false religion out there today that is attempted, if you will, and that's all they can do, uh, attempted to debate the truth, uh, has walked away with their tail between their legs. Amen. 
And if you understand, that is why we don't hear of too many people wanting to debate the church of Christ today. Nowadays, we hear more of inner debating uh, than we do of outer debating. Uh, well, I want to debate you over the role of women. They got the same role they had yesterday. <laughs> what you want to debate? Amen. Their role is to sit there and to be subject unto the authority of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What do you want to debate? Uh, I, I want to debate you over the use of choirs. Choirs can be used not in worship. What else do you want? to? I can end some of these debates uh, real quick by opening up uh, the word of God. Uh, too many times we give way. Well, I, I know that's the way the church used to be, but I think that's where you messed up. Nobody told you to think. Hey Amen. I'm sorry to burst your bubble. No one asked you to think. You know, sometimes people will say, well, I, I, I would debate you, but you don't have my education. No, you know, I, I'm not flaunting anything. I have two bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and two doctorates. Amen. I bought both of my doctorates for $40 online. Hello, somebody. You bring it on and I'll debate you. The word of God doesn't need us to debate it. It needs us to obey it. Amen. No. Look at verse number 9 of 1 Peter. 1 Peter 1 and the verse is 9. Bible says, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Our hope saves. A lot of folk in the world have hope, but in what? I want you to know our hope saves. Turn with me if you will as I wrap up Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 and, and look at verse number 24. Romans chapter 8 and the verse is 24. Bible says, for we are saved, how? By hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? Hope is in the gospel. Understand this, I'm going to piggyback off of verse number 23. We started with verse 24. Our hope is in the gospel. Run back up to verse 23. Kevin read it earlier. If you continue where? In the faith. How? Grounded and settled. And be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. Which gospel? The only one, the only true one that you have heard, which was preached to every creature which is under heaven. Do you realize the gospel hasn't changed? The gospel that was preached uh, uh, last year is the same gospel being preached this year. 20 years ago is the same gospel being preached. Now, what are preachers preaching? They show sure enough ain't, and ain't is in the new dictionary, they show sure enough ain't preaching the gospel. Amen. Everything that carries the title of the Lord's church, believe me, ain't his. Amen. You have to investigate to see whether or not it is his. Uh, Sometimes folks say, well, it, the building say it, Church of Christ. Every building that say bank, I hope you don't walk into it looking to get some money. Because if it's a blood bank, you ain't going to get none. You better make sure after you do your investigation. Know this, brothers and sisters, trials, uh, seemingly random and inexplicable, uh, can be differently and seen differently in light of the Lord and his word in the midst of tragedy. The power and beauty of our salvation can shine through how and why? Because of the greatness of our Lord. And that just may be enough light and hope to get a troubled person through another day. For the light of salvation shines clearly even in the darkest of night. How and why? Because our hope lives. May God bless you. May God keep you until we meet again.